looking good. Yeah, you, you fit. Look good, bro. I brushed my hair once a week. <laughs> I did it tonight. I took a shower, you know. But yeah, the only Showers. goal, everything goes. I mean, just talking to the mic. Oh, yeah. You got headphones, and it's more just so you can see, like, that your mic's picking you up. So make sure the cord is on the left side. We yeah. could have done this in the summer. I would have looked more tan. <laughs> yeah, join the club. Dude, yeah. I'm so I'll glad like that you wore that orange beanie because. He I, said that. He goes, I hope he wears his orange beanie. Because, really? yeah, the first couple videos I saw of you freaking boat flipping giants and landing all these 12, 13, 15, 16 pounders, like you had that orange beanie on. And that's like how I know you've like man the orange beanie guy. A little story about the orange beanie. I've had yeah. it since I was nine. That same one? Are you serious? The same one. It's a hunting beanie. I killed my first deer wearing it. Nice. I, when I was nine, I killed a doe. You're and like then this sat in the closet at my grandparents' house for years, and I picked it up. And What's it smell since? like? Dude, I wash it once a month, probably. Nice. And you're married too. I just see a ring on your finger. Yeah, I'm married. Nice. Does she fish? No. No. <laughs> no. She well, no, she fished a lot when we were dating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know how that goes. Yeah. Right? yeah. She handles business like my my old lady does, I'm sure, at the house. And you got a kid, yeah. too, don't you? Uh, two-year-old. Wow. So, yeah, dude, thanks for coming out. We're yeah. here on uh, OH Ivy. Everyone knows how freaking fire OH Ivy is because of you over the last few years. I think you started fishing it back in, what, 1920? <clears throat> no, I mean... It was me and several other guys. Yeah. It was kind of one week that blew this thing up. No kidding. That, that was 21? That was uh, February 2021. Um, ben Milliken and uh, his buddy were going south. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you hear me? Am I cutting out? I can hear you. Yeah. yeah. All okay. right. Can you hear? Yeah. Are your kind ears of okay? Yeah. It gets a little bit of a um, thing, but it won't be. All right. We're cool. Is that, yeah. Is that better? So there was like a huge freeze. As you, you guys remember that? Oh, yeah. Our pipe nearly froze at our house in Fort This Worth. was the uh, the closest lake to and Tulsa. You can pull on that, too, if you need more. It'll come out. Okay. Cool. We good? Yep. So February 2021, Millican came down here, and uh, it, it was like a freeze, man. There was no open water, east, north, south. This was the closest lake that had open water. Hmm. I was already planning on coming down, not here, but I was going to fish Hubbard and uh, Lake Daniel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, I, you know, I scope out lakes all the time. Lake yeah. Daniel had produced some good quality crappie. Yep. And like a 1280 bass in the past couple of years. We just had a Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, biologist on our podcast not too long ago, and he dropped that name. He dropped yeah. Lake Daniel. So in Oklahoma, where I come from, we got to Google where they stock Florida bass, all that stuff. So really? Anyways, I, I had Hubbard Creek on my radar and Lake Daniel on my radar. This lake was not on my radar. Milliken came down here, and they caught, like, a 16-pounder and a couple more big ones. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go down there. So the next day, I was here on my way down here. Well, um, How far of a drive is that from Oklahoma? Se seven hours, six and a half hours. That's a, that's a drive, dude. Dude, when I got here, ghost town, cabin fever, depressing, no wow. one anywhere. There was no running water because of the freeze. There was no electricity. Um, Concho was the only place that had electricity, so... It, it was kind of weird. There was no town. You know, you're in the middle yeah. of nowhere out here. Yeah. yeah. So it gets dark, dark. It's yeah. like yeah. For those of you who don't uh, haven't been here, it's like there's literally cactus right outside the the battle the battleborn RV right here. Like you walk out. I walk the dogs out here. There's stickers, and thorns everywhere yeah, around here. Have you seen a deer yet? Yeah. Oh yeah. Porcupine. Have you seen porcupine? No, nope, no porcupine. There's porcupines. Oh, great. That's rad. Yeah. So you come here at frozen. Not like the water level is low too, right? Uh, it's like 15 foot above what it is now uh -huh. it was still low but <clears throat> i didn't know nothing about the lake i never yeah. looked at a map milliken eyes he caught so he caught those fish and left so a part of me was like did yeah. he really catch these here right you know? right, right, right. Why, why, why would yeah, he leave yeah, yeah. right i didn't know him that well so yeah, i didn't yeah. know if he was telling the truth yeah, so anyways yeah. i came down here and the first five minutes on the lake i had two eight pounders five minutes i, I went straight to the dam deep water that's what you know how to do. I've like, never, I've never caught a fish there since. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. I'm telling you, it was a, uh, it was wild. First day I ever laid eyes on this two place. eights, boom, right off the bat. And then a thirteen, Thir same day. Thirteen. 20. Are you serious? And there's no one around. It's frozen. Zero. Wow. No people. Anywhere. Wow. Just your boat. 
just me. I was the only one. Wow. So, yeah, that 13, I met someone at the the marina, uh-huh. or they told me when I called to get a room. I don't, I don't exactly remember who told me, but they said, watch out, there's a bunch of trees. It's dangerous. Which there are a bunch of trees, yeah. but it wasn't dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if you go up the river. Sure. So... Like, if I, someone didn't tell you that, like, you're just, whatever. You don't really think about it. No, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. the story behind the 13, I was at Turkey Bend at the dock, mm-hmm. and there's an island, you know, a mile away. Mm-hmm. I was idling. Did I tell you this story? No. So, I was idling from that dock, and people that fish this like will know what dock it is, to the island, and I'm out in the middle of the lake. You're graphing. I'm not even graphing. I'm looking at my phone, you know, I'm just idling. Just cruising. Yeah, you know, there's, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. trees along Chilling. the river channel and yeah. stuff. And I look, and I'm in 80 foot of water, and I see a mark 40 foot down. On 2D. 2D On 2D. Center. Wow. 2D. That's all. So yeah. I thought to myself, you know, that's got to be a bass. I don't know why I thought it was a bass. I never caught a bass that deep. So uh, I put the boat in neutral. I leave the motor running. I go up and messing with my troll motor. It's hung. It won't deploy, and I'm pissed off. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, trying to get it unhung finally i get it unhung i get turned around my motor's still running that fish went an 80 foot of water 40 foot down it was in my prop wash 10 foot under the surface curious my motor's running it's in my prop wash i hurry up pick up my a rig throw out there first cast catch at 1320 jesus so are you still the first day coming here and then that just like probably opened up your mind just like wow Giants truly live here. Man, and and prior to that, I got a phone call and a uh, crazy story. It was actually the guy. I got banned from the crappie trail, and he was calling to tell me I wasn't allowed to fish him anymore. Why? Did you win too many? Like, it's, I don't know that. Dude, I, I don't know. Yeah. Politics. Oh, dude. We have it in our sport. People, in past, uh, yeah, people you know. are trying, if I, if I sponsor you, I don't want this guy fishing type of deal. So that's what happened. Oh, yeah. And yeah, the, yeah. the particular guy um, actually offered to pay double to keep me out true story that's from that's from someone else that's insane within the know wow it's not me making stuff up so um do those crappie tournaments still go strong up there in oklahoma yeah yeah it's it's a big deal yeah it's not like bass no but it's a lot of fun and that's where you really figured out the live scope thing you were doing the crappie thing right yeah i mean i was doing that with uh the panoptics i heard you. that's like the og yeah yeah they, I heard you overheard you last night, and you were saying how they used to call it all crappie scope. Crappie scope, yep. That's crazy. That wasn't that long ago, dude. It really wasn't. At the, uh, I mean, dude, yeah. yeah. Bassmaster Classic 2020. 20, yeah. I remember some of the bass pros having interviews and calling it crappie scope, crappie scope. Wow. Pan optics, they were calling it. That is so dude, insane. So, yeah, I, I, <clears throat> before I fished, I was a cable guy. Oh, cool. So I went to this dude's house, and... Uh, his internet wasn't working or something and i saw a lawrence banner on his in his garage and he wasn't even there <clears throat> it was his wife and uh-huh. i said does your husband work for lawrence and she's like no he he just moved he's working for garmin i said cool well, i fish you know she's like i'll uh am i cutting out it's no. like staticky is it here let me see your headphones <clears throat> is it just me yeah i think so so this is a cool story. One two one two. Sounds, Hello. Sounds okay to me. Hello. Stacky. Maybe it's when he talks. It's Talk like really stacky. It's crazy. I don't even hear it over here. No I, sw- static? I swear to I swear I don't even hear it. Maybe it's the cord or sure something. Uh... I like can't even focus because it's static. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Let's see. Are you okay now? Check check. Yeah. Clears bell. <laughs> it's the crazy. beanie, bro. Dude. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, I was a cable guy. For years and years and I went to this guy's house and his wife was there and I saw the Lawrence banner I said you, anyways he worked for Garmin she said I'll give him your phone number and I've dude I've heard stuff like that all the time of course like, okay whatever yeah, yeah I wasn't looking for a sponsorship or nothing no right I legit was a nobody yeah I just like to fish I yeah. had a 15 foot aluminum boat the 25 horse tilt yeah, motor just curious yeah yeah dude most of the time, my motor was blown, so I just ran around with a troll motor. Wow. <laughs> I caught so many fish in that thing. Yeah, so. graphing. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So he calls me, and he's like, hey, I hear you fish. Uh, come over. I'd like to meet you. So I go over to his house. First time I ever met him. You're probably thinking, man, he probably has a cable issue or something. And yeah. He's kept bringing me over. <laughs> you know, dude. <laughs> yeah. First time I ever met the guy, he gave me a nine-inch unit. Wow. Wow. That's Which, cool. that. 
seriously was probably worth as much as my boat. Sure. Or more. That's awesome. So that was in Very 2000, cool. either 13 or 14. And that's in Oklahoma. They're based out of Oklahoma. Yeah, that's there. in yeah. Oklahoma. Yep. So that was 2013, 14. He gave me that unit. A year and a half, whatever it was, early 2015, he called me and he said, hey, come over. I got something for you. I said, okay. You know, I got to be friends with him. Yeah. Still cordial with him. Yeah. You know, they're great guys. He yeah. literally changed my life. So I go over there and he gives me like a mess of wires and transducer yeah and he's, yeah. he's like here i got something for you this is he called it live sonar and i was like th- this is a true story i said what do you want me to do with it he said i i quote i don't know you'll figure it out are you serious dude there was wow. no instruction manual i didn't even know how to hook it up it was I think, just a prototype transducer yeah just live prototype transducer, transducer. Yeah. um i think it was actually a prototype ps21 if i remember right mm-hmm or 31, or I don't even remember the number. So I hook it up, and I go to the lake, and I was fishing docks for crappie, and you yeah. can see just yeah. hundreds of crappie. And uh, anyways, I knew where the crappie were, so there was no sense looking at it. Yeah. So I kind of just forgot about it. And I like a lot of the, it. like all the bass pros did for yeah. like two years. I'm like, oh, I don't even need to look at this. Yeah. I know where they're at. Yeah. I took it bass fishing a few times, and... I was probably throwing at sand bass or something, but right. every single fish I threw at followed. I couldn't catch them. And I'm like, dude, this sucks. Bat, this ain't going to work for bass. Right. They're just going to follow. Right, right. So fast forward a year. I got it in 2015, 2016, probably in January. It's We're, we're just murdering the crappie where it's got to clay. We caught probably 100. We already had a limit. I caught a fish, and... I don't remember what I was doing, but I was in the back of the boat. I came back to the front of the boat, and my pole was just hanging over the edge. Mm-hmm. And we used two jigs, one on mm-hmm. 14 mm-hmm. inches above the other. I went to pick up my pole, and I saw the crappie eat the jig on the screen. Yeah. Freak accident. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God. It's you know, coolest thing freak ever. out yeah. moment. Yeah. Because yeah. that could have been, like, the first fish ever caught on Ford Fish and Sonic. Sure. So Live. I'm like, I'm not, yeah. dude, oh, my God, you know. And yeah. there's just fish everywhere buffalo car you know yeah and the rest of the day i caught two fish and my buddy caught like 30 he kept saying dude quit looking at that screen you know because we used to two pole stroll yeah one pole in each hand yeah 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 yeah, yeah. sure and i was up here with one trying to looking at him. him yeah you're the cable guy dude. like technical like looking for these so freaking... and i think that's probably that's translated a lot to my success bass fishing because i had to learn mm-hmm. all these species of fish mm-hmm. how they acted what they look like and that's like the number one rule in fishing right the, the best way to learn something is by learning it yourself like you can't tell me so like i'll bring up the, the white jig thing like everyone knows i mean they google you they see that you just busted 60 plus 60 plus pound stringer out here and you're throwing a white jig a trailerless white jig and uh and that's that's like so original it's not even funny and that's stuff you learn yeah. by doing things by yourself on your own no one told you to do that you did yeah, that by and, yourself and a lot of the success comes to i i had to learn it myself i yep. didn't have youtube i didn't yep. have an instruction manual i didn't you know i so when i go out there i can tell a carp from a bass from a that's a big deal catfish from crappie yep you know um shoot now i've been looking at it almost eight years yeah and that that's crazy is that that's a long time is that something that's easy to te- like you take out a lot of clients? Is that something that's easy to teach, or is it something like uh, differentiating the species, or is that something that just takes a ton of experience? No, like you have to have an eye for it's it. It's easy to teach, um, but you do have to spend time on the water. Mm-hmm. And certain times of the year, fish act different. The bass almost all the time is going to be moving. Moving. Unless it's in the summer and they're on stand and timber, then yep. they'll be sitting in the still. shade. Yeah. A lot of times they'll be circling the tree. Wow. A lot of times, if it's high in the water column and it's circling the tree, sand bass. Mm. Sand bass don't like circling the tree below. They, so it's, they're always they get eaten. Up. So it's not, <laughs> yeah. it's not like the shape of the blob you're looking at. It's the movement that gives <clears throat> off what it is. Most of what I do is the movement, and the shape obviously tells the size. Yeah. Um, with a carp or a buffalo, you can see that split tail yeah. pretty much immediately. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to see where the head is, where the tail is, right off – like we just left the lake earlier and yeah. we saw some huge share lunker caliber fish wow. that were carp. I looked at him for a while and when I got that right angle, I saw the tail. The and tail, like, fork tail, and it's yeah. kind of slow moving, suspended. So, yeah. Yeah. so you, you work on that fish and try and get the angle yeah. for a while? And 
I mean, however long it takes. Mm -hmm. wow. So most people would probably still be throwing at that fish, but knowing that it was a carp, you know. Um, basically, just how they act. Crappie, black crappie especially, uh -huh. they like to school up out in open water, mm -hmm. and then you throw at them a couple times, and they kind of start moving off. White crappie, most of the time, this time of year especially, they're just out in no man's land sitting perfectly still. Chilling. Perfectly still. Hmm. So you can, that's why we have those long rods, you know, you take them, them right straight in front of them. down. I just caught 20 of them. Wow. Because I wasn't catching no bass. So, anyways. That's insane, dude. So er, the catfish most of the time are moving around on bottom. Summertime catfish, I actually got on a um, a pattern on Ulaga Lake, these big, huge, I was looking for a five foot long catfish on standing timber <sighs> at Ulaga Lake. I only did it one time. People ask me all the time, is it good for catfish? I've only done it once. I had a bass rod. Well, they got to be suspended. I mean, it's hard It's hard to see them on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th and they suspend in the summer. Yeah, okay. So I went out and caught some crappie, cut the heads off, and uh, went to the Ulaga Lake. First time, the only time I've ever done this. There's tons of gar. I found two catfish. The very first catfish I dropped down, I had a bass rod with that crappie head right down that tree, and he hit it immediately. It had to be 60-plus pounds. I had it hooked for about five seconds. The rod wasn't enough to get a good hook set, and the wow. fish got away, so I was like... You're noodling with a crappie head dude, on live I, scope. I dropped straight down on this. Like, you were the tree. I yeah. dropped right... The fish was just sitting wow. there. Wow. And then I found another one, and I couldn't get it to bite, but... Interesting. It works on catfish. How about that, That's dude? Nuts. That might be next for me. But yeah. <laughs> may, I don't know about the rivers and stuff, but in the sure. lakes, on the sand and timber in the summer, man, they just stick to it. Wow. Interesting. I mean, I was driving until I saw like a four or five foot long catfish, and yeah. I found two of them in about two hours. That's insane. What so, What so have you seen like around here on OHIV, like when it comes to like the different species and their behaviors, anything like that's a little different from other lakes? Uh. You know, summertime, come spring, there's just millions of carp everywhere. Were you guys here? No. They're just no. everywhere. Now, there's, like, no carp. Why is that? they got to be out deep. Deep, yeah. Like, 60, 70 foot. But wow. this time of year, I mean, most of the time, if you see it, it's going to be a bass, a good chance. Interesting. Which makes it fairly easy, but, man... These yep, things aren't same. biting. Yeah. So you did the you did the crappie thing. You're you're doing you know you're introduced to live. You're you're catching catfish on crappie heads, and then like you're expanding and expanding. Like you told me last night, you know you did the Arbuckles, you did the yep. big bass lakes all through Oklahoma, and you started expanding and expanding, expanding. I saw I I, I told Trade I was gonna creep your social media before you came and hung out. But like you did the door shack thing out out in uh, is it, it's Idaho or mm -hmm. Washington I out in Idaho. You caught eight pound smallmouth. Do I need to, do I need to bleep that name? No. Okay. I mean, you're willing to drive thirty hours if you want, guys. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> See you up there. Yeah. I'll, and I'll that goes back to putting in your own time and doing it yeah, all by yourself. A lot of uh, a lot of the stuff that I found obviously is been on social media, but a lot of it's on my own. Yeah. Um, like I know of another lake in Washington where. Um, when I was actually in Idaho, there was a two-day tournament. It took 64 pounds to win, smallmouth. Dang. That's in Washington. That's in Washington State. We'll wow. talk about that when we'll talk about that later. This is over. Yeah. yeah, and then there's another one in Montana, eight-pound smallmouth. You know, pretty. Consistent. Also, we'll talk about that one. We're do gonna do that little western stroll towards yeah. the end of the year. Are yeah. you interested in tournament fishing at all? No, not at you all. Know, so I started out with the crappie, and yep. then yep. I got tons of hate. Bad taste, yeah. Just kind of because you're good. Just dude. because you you're good em. with live. Well, so live sonar. People, some people think I'm a little cocky. I don't know. I guess. Look, I've, I've known uh, you me, a few days. So me and Chris were talking about it, or maybe me and Johnny, and I and I told him I said, look, if I caught that size of fish. I'd, I don't know that I'd call it cocky, but I definitely have some confidence. Like, I, I, you can't not own what you do. Like, what are you supposed to do? Not talk about it? Yeah, and I don't know. So, yeah. So, to start, I, I was getting a lot of hate. I was catching two-pound crappie, which at the time were big crappie. Yeah. Now it's not. Using live technology at yes. this point. Yeah. And then the hate. Here comes the hate. Let's see him fish the trails. Let's see him. Oh, gosh. You know, so one day I was just like, okay. Yeah. And I think I won six or seven out of my first, like, nine or ten. Oh, wow. In 2020, 
Was anyone else using uh, live? Uh, very few. I So when I fe- actually wanted to go crappie fish, I took several people on guided trips. And I took one guy, and I was like, so what do you want to learn? He's like, uh, I just want to learn how to win on the crappie trail, you know? Sure. So I went and taught him, and he won, like, three or four tournaments. So I'm like, man, if this guy's winning, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I went. So first year, we won, uh, shoot, probably 150 grand crappie fishing. Wow, wow, dude. That's insane. So won three or four boats. Nice. And, and they were mad at you or at the technology? They were mad that well you guys are seeing it in the bass world now these people yeah. that don't have the technology hate my guts yes. yeah oh and, yeah they get super better so bitter. easy to hate until yeah. they get it and they realize wow this is fun exactly. and it's not as easy exactly and then i saw it in the crappie world i've seen it firsthand these people deny 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 yeah they want to act like it's nothing and just hate and yeah. then they get it and then dude i got so much hate in the crappie world 99 percent of crappie fishermen got it now now yeah. yeah did i get Shoot, an apology some of them have two three no. yeah. Yeah. yeah i got no apologies yeah some of these haters on in the bass side mm-hmm. they're gonna be using it oh yeah. oh yeah a lot of them hey there's a guy out here right now called it high fence fishing talks so much crap about it uh-huh guess who's out there today oh he calls he calls it high he, fence fishing he was like every time i caught a 15 pounder Oh, he's high fence fishing that shouldn't count. using live technology using live oh, wow. because at the time he didn't have it or and or know how yeah. to use Bro, it. Bro, a 15 pounder is a 15 pounder. So, whatever guide that is, dude, that's he's out here. Lunker. Yeah. He's out here guiding people. Uh, really? Is he it? using yeah. live yeah. technology? Wow. So, hypocrites, man. I don't need an apology. Right. But, yeah. I took a lot of heat and I'm still, dude, I'm. Do you feel like you had like a, t- you have a chip on your shoulder because of how that all no, played out? No, I don't worry about none of that. Yeah. Are you a comment reader? You read comments? No, I mean, dude, they kind of so you funny. Just, yeah, so you just posted your them. sixty plus pound sack, right? So, yeah, that's. Do you, you went through the comments? Come on, dude, did you? We, on so actually on Facebook there weren't hardly any negative. Oh, comments. good, that's good, good. Yeah, I, I don't see. I don't read comments, and she does. And she do. brings them to my attention. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me yeah, go yeah, back. Yeah, to I the, hear you. Yeah, go back to the crappie. So, anyways, yeah. we went went and tore the crappie world up, and uh, now everyone's using it. I'm probably not even the best fisherman now, you know? So people got good with it, and they're really good with it. Right. And I just don't crappie fish. You were just ahead of the curve. Yeah, so. just like now. People are going to yeah. be out here right. catching yeah. giants. It's right. going to happen. Right. You know, people are smart. Yeah. They're gonna, we oh, they pick up on everything. Put someone on the moon in the 60s. Someone's going to figure out how to use live scope on right. the HIV, mm-hmm. you know? Right. Um, so I did that. I accomplished pretty much everything I wanted to. And one day I was just laying in bed. And uh, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go bass fishing. Dude. So I just fished Prague Lake, and I found some some bass on some trees. I think I might have told you the story. Mm-hmm. So I was laying in bed, and it was like 9 in the morning, and I had knee surgery. Um, so I was off work, and, yeah, I had knee surgery. So I'm trying to get my dates here set up. So I had knee surgery on Thanksgiving, January rolled around. I'm still in physical therapy. I'm laying in bed at 9 o'clock. I was like, you know what? I've been fishing. Because I could fish. Yeah. But my job, I couldn't climb up ladders oh, and stuff. Yeah. So um, I went to the lake. I backed down the ramp. This was the first time I ever bass fished with the Ford facing sonar. Turned the GoPro on. Unhooked, unlatched my boat. Put the plug in. Backed the boat in. Went and parked the truck. Came back to the boat. GoPro still running. Pushed the boat off, caught an eight pounder, stopped the GoPro five and a half minutes. First time ever using Ford Face and Sonar within five and a half minutes of putting the boat in the water, I had an eight pounder. An Oklahoma eight. In Oklahoma. That's, so that's, that's like hard a to do. Yeah. Exa- yeah, exactly. So man, it, it was it was kind of like the right time, right person, right place, meant to be type of deal. Knee surgery. I was off work. I had the Ford Face and Sonar. No one else was using it. So man, I just went crazy. And that was in 2020. I found all the Florida bass stockings in Oklahoma. I hit You're just Googling it. You're just, just seeing what, yeah, what, where I the knew, Floridas live. Yeah. I knew Florida's got bigger. And three months into it, I caught a 40-pound stringer on nine different Oklahoma lakes. That's impressive. And I caught a double digit on seven different Oklahoma lakes. Jeez. So people see me now, and they're like, let's That's see them get all five. Do you yeah. have any uh, rec- like lake records or anything in Oklahoma? No, they don't do the lake record program. They don't do that. They, they did, but they stopped it. They suck. Everything. Yeah. You would think that they would care a little right? more. Right? Yeah. No, I think it costs money. So, oh. 
They, yeah. I get that. <laughs> Texas is the shit. They dude. so they did the lake records and then yeah. they stopped the lake records. Even with the lake records, I probably wouldn't. Ha- I would have probably one lake record or two. So I caught a twelve eighty eight in cedar. I caught that's a, Oklahoma. That's yep. tough to do. Wow. I caught a fifty that's pound in, stringer. That's impressive. I caught a fifty point Arbuckle? zero six. No cedar. No, cedar. I caught if I remember right a twelve eighty eight two nine seventy eights. Or 987s. Are these like Highland Reservoirs? Kind of like clear water, deep clear that, water? That one's not clear. Really? Small, 80 acres. Wow. They call them lakes. Yeah. But I'm just trees. taking what I could. Underwater trees or? No. No. Just a ball. Structure. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's weird. Wow. A deep, muddy lake. And these fish were on the bottom. That's so impressive. I, yeah. So I caught a 1288 there. I caught a 1220. Um, out of Dripping Springs, I caught an eleven and a twelve out of the same lake, Taft Lake, Oklahoma, for you guys watching. That is absolutely mm. insane. Why didn't you take me to any of these lakes when, when I lived you there? Lived there I, didn't, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. Our buckle's the only one. Yeah, I was a one trick pony yeah. when I lived in Oklahoma. Our buckle. Yeah. Oh yeah. First time I ever went to our buckle, caught an eleven seventy six, forty pound stringer. First time I ever went there. Have you ever caught one over 10 where you weren't looking at it on live? Uh, Yeah, one. <laughs> <laughs> and how many over 10 have you caught? That, that was when I was young. Yeah, sure. In count. my 15-foot warrior. Yeah. Um, so I don't what, know. What, okay, so every man's got a kill count. I mean, I know what my my 10-pound-plus count is. Dude, honestly, this last October, it kind of got hectic. I'm over 100. Got over be. 100. That, that one is... day, a couple weeks ago, I had, I had six over 10 in one day. Six over 10. It, how many of those would you say have come from OHIV? Out of the, let's just say, let's just say, hundred. say it's a hundred. Yeah. yeah. Um, probably seventy-five. Yeah. Jeez. Wow. And probably maybe not, maybe seventy. I caught some out of Allen Henry, caught some out of Lake Fork, and then probably twenty out of Oklahoma. That's impressive, dude. I know guys in California that are nowhere near that number. And what's weird is they're not on the live deal like out there. Dude. I still talk to my dude. buddies out in Cali. Like they don't. They if different. someone picks it up, and that's why I was so success, successful early on because these fish never seen a rigs out in the middle of the lake. Yeah. Right. I was catching every fish I threw at almost. I mean, it was insane. Like wow. I'm gonna tell my grandkids. Yeah. You know, we hear stories about when Lake Fork in the '80s. Yeah, and you yeah, just yeah. Throw over right. there and you catch ten off one tree. You know, that was legit how board facing sonar was when no one was using it. I could go to these little, little city lakes and just catch every fish I saw. That's insane. But now you go to these little city lakes, everyone's got their head down, and yeah. there's like right. three boats. Dude, the tour's like that, too. Like, everyone's got their head down. Like, boats will pull up on each other. Everyone's got their head down with a hoodie on. So, were you ever, a, like, a fan and watched bass fishing on TV? Not really. Well, then this question, because I, I just wonder, like, you, as a guy who does it, is it? Do you think it's enjoyable to watch someone else? It's do? terrible. It's terrible. It's to gonna watch. hurt your sport. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nobody only, wants to watch it. Yeah. Only if it's a highlight reel, like you just posted. Like if, if it, you're catching tens, elevens, twelve, whatever, that's cool. But like watching someone do that for two, three, four hours straight, it is not fun to watch. Like Bass Live, you know, when they go, people tune out, dude. Yeah. You, you yeah. don't want to watch some guy just yeah. up there not talking. Yeah. Staring at a screen. So right. how about this? So like, so Bass Live. You watch some Bass Live, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So what if they had like a live shot of what the guy is looking at? I mean, that would help things, Dude, right? That right? would be money. Yeah. Yeah. But in order for them to do that, they're probably going to want more money from yep sponsors. Dude, you know how the game works. Yeah. <laughs> you so know how it that works. That would be awesome. Yeah. So, but that might hurt a guy like me who's teaching people because right. they could just watch you guys do right. it for free. Yeah. Or if they offered a twenty dollar monthly subscription, yeah. then so they have access it. to that, like yeah. a second screen they can bring up. That's I need a royalty smart. off that. There you go. It's that's, a good idea. That's a Josh. really good idea. Yeah. So know? that that would be pretty cool. I'd yeah. pay for that. Yeah. Just to see what you guys are saying. Yeah. yeah, that's really smart. That's the one way they could tap into it. They're always looking for a way to get a subscriber. Oh, dude, if people pay me two thousand dollars to go learn this stuff. They would pay twenty dollars a month yeah. or so. The yeah. uh, trait and I, well. So Trey and I fished OHIV like seven or eight years ago or whatever, and it was nothing like it was, right? It was, this, during, this, the, it was during the drought. This lake went through a crazy drought. I mean, all the brush has grown up all the way around, and now, you know, then the lake comes up, and you guys do do your thing. But I spent the last like five, six, seven days out here, and, and I'm just like every other guy. I met a guy from Ohio, made a guy from Kentucky, uh, from all over the place, 
I'm just like those guys. I'm I'm trying to hop on this bandwagon and see what this thing is all about. It is not easy, dude. It is not easy at all. Mm-mm. What percentage of and by the way, all these guys have brand new rigs, brand new trucks. I'm like, where's all this money coming from down here? Um, but what percentage of all the guys that I have seen on this lake in the last six days, no, in your opinion, know what to look for? Not many. You know, you get 500 people out here, someone's going to catch a big one. Right. But it's like tournament fishing. Yeah. Maybe not in the elites, but you could say there's five or ten guys that have no shot, yep. even in the elites. Yep. So, like, okay, for example, so, like, that 60-pound bag, okay, so it's, it's kind of, uh, guys do the landmark and triangulate, and it's kind of obvious, like, where you had caught these fish, and honestly, the last six days I've been out here, there's been no less than two to four boats on this stretch every single time I drive by it. Um, can you tell just by looking at the guys fishing in your spot, like, oh, he will catch one or he won't catch one just no. by his mannerisms? And- so, it's, it's. That's kind of the downfall of crappie. Uh-huh. If someone sees you fishing over there, uh-huh. what they're going to take a minnow and they're going to go drop on the crappie's Dunk head it. and catch it. Yep. Bass fishing, too many variables. Yep. They might be on bottom. They might be suspended. Yep. You might have to be twitching your bait. You might have to be way too many variables. You, you like can't that. just throw You like there. that challenge, don't you? Yeah, so yeah. people, they can know where I'm fishing. Yep. There's still big bass there right yep. now. Can you catch them? Yep. So what about like your clientele? Do they catch a lot of uh, the big ones? So I tell them up front, you know, it's going to be a couple hours of me teaching you because mm-hmm. it's a visual thing. You have to see what I do. Mm-hmm. I can't just say, hey, you need to throw out there and reel it in. You yep. know? There's special techniques to it. I got kind of a cheat code that I tell these people, and they're pretty much all of them are really su- successful. So I That's got a awesome. couple cheat codes that nobody else knows yeah. unless you get on that boat. Yeah. But uh, That's awesome. I, you know, I think I had a guy catch a 12. I had two or three 11s caught this year. I Probably 15 double digits clients caught, which it, is pretty good considering I've only guided 30, 40, 50 days, however many days I've guided, you know. Yeah. The odds are really good. Isn't that an amazing feeling when you, you know, when you know something, like you know, like the competition, whether they're guides, whether it's tournament competition, like you know they don't know what, you know, what you're in tune to. Yeah. And you could hold that deep down and just pull it out, you know, at will. Chris doesn't the know. The swim bait thing. Yeah, is, Chris doesn't know about that. He just word vomits on Bass Slide every <laughs> I, secret I he to has. Teach. I try to teach and a little then, bit. Yeah, man, it's cool. Yeah, you know. And but there's there's secrets. You probably have secrets that no one sure. else knows. Oh, yeah. Um. You know, it, why yeah. did you start guiding, and and when 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 did you first when, start guiding? Well, I started. I got a new boat. I was broke. I had no money. Right. And, I'm, yeah. So my family literally bought me a nicer boat. Yeah. That's awesome. Out of my fifteen foot aluminum boat, I was like, I was making no money at the camp. Yeah, yeah. So they bought me a two thousand three Ranger. And this is when you were catching them, like when you were starting this, to figure. I out. made a name for myself locally. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Houston called me and said, hey, I want to film a TV show. You're catching them. Oh, wow. I had a 15-foot war eagle. That's aluminum cool. boat. That's awesome, though. Wait, no electronics. crappie or bass? Crappie. Crappie. No electronics. Wow. So I started guiding. This is the story. So my family bought me this Ranger, and my goal was just to take a couple people a month to pay for it. Right. And then the live thing started, the pen optics, and I started getting hundreds of messages, and I started the, the Facebook page four years ago, five years ago, whatever it was. And Mm -hmm. uh, I started getting busy. And then the bass thing, and here we are. That's really cool. So I started guiding in 2016. I started bass guiding in 2020. Full-time or just uh, here and there? I started full-time. I I got fired. That's another story. (laughs) Fishing too much. So I was fishing a lot, catching those 40-pound stringers. But I uh, forgot to mention I got fired after I had knee surgery. They called me one day. I fished a tournament. Oh, gosh. And I they n- found out. Oh. Well, I didn't even know. It was against the, the law. Or you're, I on, didn't, you're on I, leave. and Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah. So I went and fished a Nichols up at Grand. Yeah. I didn't pre-fish. That's a big, bo- that's a big tournament. Dude, yeah. I didn't pre-fish. I spent five days on this lake in my life. I showed up and fished, finished second. Wow. Well, with the live. Yeah. Dude. On Grand. It, and at Grand's a big lake, dude. Dude, a lot of carp, a lot yeah. of buffalo. It was extremely difficult to do what I was doing. And I ended up fishing a Skeeter the next week and finished 8th or ninth. I might have got them flip-flopped. Anyways, I won like $5,000, not a whole lot of money. They called me and they said, uh, we're going to have to let you go. You've been working while on disability. And I was like, "Yeah, not working on disability? And they're like, you've been guiding. I'm like, no, I haven't. I've been fun fishing. Yeah. You guys didn't say I couldn't fish. I'm yeah. sitting down in my yeah. seat. 
And they're like, well, what about the money you won? And I was like, what about it? It's like going to the casino. Yeah. You don't know you're going to win. Yeah. Anyways, they fired me. Wow. So I got canned April 2020. They really fired me because of COVID. Uh, yeah, that was their excuse. That was their excuse. But that's kind of when you decided to go yeah, all in. Yeah, so I went guy. all in, and then here we are. This yeah. happened. Funny how it works. And you two and a half years. Yeah, and then you started, like I said, expanding like further and further south and fishing these lakes. You know what's crazy is a lot of the viewers, whether they're live or they're watching your YouTube, and they see this blonde dude with an orange cap, just like setting the hook on, you know, looking at the screen, setting the hook. Like you gotta know where to shine that thing. Like you gotta know, like you gotta know how to read a map. Like I feel like you guys are really good at that because it's like an Easter egg hunt. Like you're okay. Where where should I where should I look under? You know, up in the tree or down in this root ball or whatever it is. But like you, you guys do a really good job at reading a topography map and knowing where the channel bends are and where those points intersect with those channel bends or where the creek channel splits. I'm gonna shine my live on that on that area right there. That's like half of it right there, I would say. Something else that made me really good is these lakes I learned to fish on were standing timber. Yeah. So I was trying to get an A-rig through trees. Through it. like Uh, There were several days. There's one day I lost $200 worth of A-rigs. Oh, wow. I had no money. Remember that. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I wasn't making $2,000. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, I was losing a lot of money just learning how and when I need to cast, when not to cast. You know, and I learned if you stay on that fish long enough, eventually he's going to come out of that tree. Wow. He That's will come insane. out eventually. You just got to follow him for a little bit. So so what's the move when you see a tree and it looks like a thing of broccoli? You cast past it and let it fall straight down, you know, fall straight down. And then you, what, you bring it over the top of the broccoli and then let it fall back no, down? No, you want to try to bring it on the sides. And sides, all, and yeah. The viewers are going to think I'm crazy, but I straight vertical jigged with an A-rig down several of these trees and caught big bass. That's how I did it. Without snagging up. I believe that. Crappie jigging an A-rig down the middle of a tree. Think about it. It's just, I mean, it's just swim baits doing this. I mean, you're just pulsing it, right? And they're they're just doing that. Like a bait ball. And that that 12-pounder's never seen that technique before ever in his life. But then you come out here and you throw it 500 and don't get a bite. Wow. It's weird. So how, like, what kind of changing the subject? You, You said, you know, it's not fun to watch. You and and I know Randy Blockett obviously is not your biggest fan, and it's probably <laughs> yeah. mutual. But in saying that, do you agree with his assessment that it could hurt our sport at, on the tournament yeah. side? Yeah, at least? I mean, I don't have an opinion one way or another. I've never watched any of his stuff, but uh, I I definitely see where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it it ha- it's extremely difficult doing what we do and with the, but it's not easy. But in a way, it it can hurt the sport. Do you think it's going to hurt these fisheries? No, I don't think it's going to hurt the fisheries. I think the fish are going to get more educated. They'll they'll adapt. They'll adapt like they do. It's not going to hurt the fisheries at all unless we as fishermen start keeping them. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. But just uh, the watching and... The uh, watching aspect. As far as just the average guy going out, it's going to make it way better. You can buy more baits. Right. Spend more money on electronics. It gives mm-hmm. more people an opportunity. I couldn't. I've la- literally taken people that did not have boats that came fishing with me and loved it so much. They went out and bought a boat. That's awesome, dude. And that's what it's about. Yes, like, honestly. Yeah, One cool. guy from uh, Carson, if you're watching, from Magnolia, Arkansas, he came with me, didn't have a boat. He's like, no, I don't need a boat. I can just pay on get for guy trips, you know. We went out and had so much fun. Like, literally a week later, he sent me a picture of a new Ranger he Brand bought. Brand new boat. That's Brand cool, new Ranger. Well, how you, about that? You think about how uh, big, especially with, I mean, our generation, but also a lot of the young kids in gaming is. Mm-hmm. And it plays why, right into that wheelhouse. So, yeah. you know. I'm, it's, it's, it's helping the sport, but as far as tournament bass fishing goes, I don't think it's going to help. Do no, you think they'll personally. end up? banning it in tournaments i don't know if they could do that no i don't think so. they can't turn down that money yeah yeah i'm just wondering yeah i don't think so yeah the big the three electronic companies are all paying money to be on that platform but if people stop watching because it's boring something that might be like you can use it two days and the third day you can't use it type of deal maybe that's like MLF rules now. That's like some hard to follow stuff. That that's is hard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, so you have yeah. these rules, but then you don't. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's a bad rule. Don't yeah. Get that. Don't use that rule. Yeah, you're not yeah. getting a royalty off of that. I mean, what do you idea. think? What do you think watching someone on YouTube looking at a screen? 
I like watching highlight reels. Like I like you freaking face lipping it's, fourteen pounds. It's pounders. cool knowing that you might be able to go do that. Learn yeah. how yes, to do it. Absolutely. I like seeing Dude, trophies. I've been inspired. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I like seeing trophies. I like to see a master at work. Yes. Doing it. I do. I want to just see it. Boring. Not being explained to me. That no, sucks. but if yeah. someone's giving me an educational course, yep. like you said, watching the screen, there's yeah. something for me to learn, but there's nothing to learn when someone's head's down and you're looking at their back. Watching Bass Live for four hours a day where that guy on Bass Live, that's his job. He has to put fish in his live well to weigh him in and be successful yeah, that day. That. On the other hand, you, the guides, the guys like you, you're there to educate your client yeah. that is paying to sit there and watch you for seven, eight hours a day or whatever it is. So it's completely different. Um, but yeah, I, I, when I don't make the cut on a, on a third day or fourth day and I, I tune into live, I, I only tune into live to, you know, listen to Mark Zona, you know, rag on Ronnie Moore or something like that. Cause I, when the live <laughs> stuff is going on, you know, front face and sonar, it, it's so hard to watch. Even when they're catching five and six pounds, small mouth, like it's, it's tough to watch. I'm not learning anything. I don't feel like. And, if it wasn't for people paying to get on my boat for yeah. me to teach them, yeah. I would just tell it to the world. Sure. But I told it to the world, crappie fishing, yeah. and it exploded. Yeah. Yeah. And I made zero dollars. Yeah, it's a business for you. I made zero dollars. The deal with Garmin fell through. They wanted their units back. I made them millions of dollars. They yeah. know I did. I had to give the units back. What? So what happened there? They asked for the units back. Uh, long, yeah. uh, a retail uh, a dealer kind of sabotaged it for yeah. me, but... Best thing that ever happened. Yeah. Good. It's I'm with Lawrence. It, yeah. I'm with Russell Marine. It's great. Cool. Good. It stinks though, you know that y- that you did your job. You helped them. Yeah. And that something could go sour over what sounds like something extremely. And they'll petty. they'll tell you some of the Garmin guys will tell you that 1222 GPS map 1222 exists because of me because wow. I promoted it so hard. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's kind of the same deal with the crappie. Yeah. I'll double your money if you don't let this guy fish. Yeah. What happened with the Garmin deal? This dealer said, "We're not going to carry your stuff if you keep this." They guy. just didn't like you. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's a lo- it's, yeah. yeah. They it's probably steeper. tried to sue me if I tell the story. Right. So. Yeah. Hey, I got a really good lawyer. All right. <laughs> right. We can talk about it if you need some help. <laughs> so, anyways, it, it it was a sabotage deal. Um, I didn't lose friendships over it, but they were never going to pay me. They were never going to give me anything, wow. and I was at a point a certain point that I thought I deserved it, whether I did right. or not, I don't know, but right. I made them a lot of money. And you have a business, you know, like mm-hmm. you've mastered something and that's just being smart. You know, you, yeah. you have a family to feed. So everything works out. Yeah. I lost my job. I'm fishing full time. Yeah. I'm making a lot I'm of money, money, whatever. Yeah, sure. My, my sponsorships now, Russell Marine, that's like awesome, I have the dude. perfect team, I think. That's awesome. So all this happened for a reason. Overwhelming at all or no? Are you comfortable like no, as, it, as far as workload and, as and far obligations? It, I mean, man. It, Your YouTube's good and growing and you do everything yourself, right? He's not, you're not really a big I'm YouTuber. Not, I've posted he doesn't a couple YouTube. videos. Yeah. Some, yeah. Yeah, it blows my mind that you don't really get down on that. It's so hard, like yeah. editing everything. Yeah. I know, but if you're making a, a decent amount of money, I, I think you should you know, bring someone on. I, it's so hard because I don't even know what I'm doing next week. Yeah. You, a, an option, <laughs> yeah. though. Where am I going to be next week? I don't know. Word. An option Word. is for you just to take those cameras and hire just an editor. Just take your footage and you send them to Yeah, them. so I... And it's still a lot of work. That's something else, man. I got a lot of people reaching out. I got a lot of people... Offering help. Offering help. And you should, just though. just a little overwhelming. Yeah. No, I mean, that's where, that's where this world is, you know. And it kind of sucks, but you, that's the it name sucks, of the game. Yeah, but you've mastered what you do, and the next step is really building that platform. You're doing good on Facebook. Yeah, and, man, I'm still new to the whole fishing scene. People wanting to sponsor me. So you guys know Tommy Martin? Yeah. yeah. So someone told me a story about Tommy Martin that he would rather have five really good sponsors that he can focus on and take right, care of take care yep. than have 50. That's good advice. That's, that's great that's advice. That's great advice. So that's kind of where I'm at. Good I got people you. reaching out all the time. Good. Just, just like, waiting for good. the You know, uh, I don't right want to get my social media to be watered down yep. just shouting out all these companies yeah. constantly, and then people won't want to see it. Yeah. There's a small percentage of Bass Pros that, that are like that, that make that work, but all in all, that that uh, that piece of advice from Tommy Martin, old school, old school Hammer, that, that's on. it. So five's a good number. Five's yeah. a really good number. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, so Nick, with you, um, 
I didn't really know you. I knew who you were. You can't, like Chris said, you can't miss the orange toboggan. Yeah. I knew I knew the live sonar thing, but I, I never really paid attention. I'm not a huge Facebooker. And um, someone sent me, so when Chris was accused of snagging a fish mm-hmm. using his live technology. On the top hook swim bait. Someone, on the Tennessee I was River. so mad. There was um, a guy. Which is impossible. Exactly. Yeah. We'll, we'll go there because yeah. I want to hear yeah. your your two cents on this. Someone, so there was um, a guy who, I'll say it, works for Missile Baits. I love you, John, but <laughs> this guy can kiss it. Um, he was like messaging anyone who could saying, Chris, you know, s- snagged this fish, just, just running his name through the mud. And someone, and I was mad and telling someone this, and they sent me a, a screenshot, and you stuck up for Chris. I don't even know if you remember this. It was you very did? small. I didn't know that. I don't think I ever told oh, you. Thanks, and bro. that's thank when you, I started dude. paying attention to you, did little you really? yeah, You I, basically. I remember now. Yeah, yeah, I think you said something very, very short, but it was like, it's impossible. And I thought, thank God someone who actually it, knows that's awesome. is saying that because Chris. He wasn't gonna. He didn't want to go on social media and defend himself. He was like, "People who think I snagged, they they don't have enough experience. Like it's a pointless argument." And before before you explain that, just so everyone knows, I mean, I was just reeling my stuff, and I didn't even see it on live. You know, I was just reeling my stuff and gong set the hook, and then like it gets hooked in the belly. Legal fish, like yeah, it ham like something hammered. Yeah, it. but Bam. you were your typical kind of douchey self, uh-huh. and you were like. Bah, bah. Yeah, right. He hammered it. It hammered. Yeah, I mean, but I, your celebration was as douchey well, as it man. gets. It was a six pounder on yeah. day three. Yeah. There's a lot of anger in this world. Yeah. And people are always trying to bring people yeah. down. Yeah. And yep. it, it's hard to not take it personal, and, yeah. and it's it's kind of crappy that we can't defend ourselves uh-huh. without yeah. being the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you would have defended mm-hmm. yourself. You'd have been the bad guy. Yeah. Egotistical, can't handle criticism. That's what they come back yeah. at you at yeah. if you defend. And you're just trying to like tell the truth. Yeah. Like it's and to be fair. We snag spoonbill, but these things are six and seven foot long and over a hundred pounds. Using live technology. Using live, and it's not easy. Still yeah. using a gigantic treble hook. Tre- yeah. And a gigantic fish. Yeah. And it's and still that's hard. And it's legal. Yeah. And it's extremely difficult. Yeah. Are spoonbill slow? Not not no. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I just wondering. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But to snag a bass yeah. that's 20 inches long, mm-hmm. 24 inches long. And, and like you said at the start of the show, always moving. Always moving. Yep. Yeah. Unless you're out there with a the treble hook uh-huh. jerking, it's going to be very, very difficult. Yeah. And I've never tried it, but I would I would have to imagine it's damn near I would have to imagine if you could snag bass, we'd see a lot more teens coming out of this lake instead of everyone saying it's so, so hard. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. man, and we could... It, we could dig into this. The yeah. game wardens out here actually accused me of snagging. The Texas game wardens. So I it got to the point, I called the biologists that I'm friends with mm-hmm. in, here in Texas. Mm-hmm. And I said, can you guys vouch for me? I said, all four of these share lunkers I've donated, mm-hmm. <clears throat> they had no hook marks on their sides, did yeah. they? No. They're, they're, we, we check them for marks. There was nothing wrong with these fish. You didn't snag these fish. And I was like, thank, thank God you. I got you yeah. guys having my back. Yeah. I mean, it's it's cra- everyone. Yeah. So here's how it starts. Game wardens are human. I get it. But someone's over here saying he snagged one, and yep. then he tells that he Josh out there snagging yep. them. And next thing you know, everyone's uh-huh. talking about me and snagging them. And then a hotshot warden has got to, uh, you know, feels like he's yeah, got to validate himself and invest investigate Dude. that situation. Game warden got on someone's boat out here. This was in the fall of probably 2021. I didn't know this person. I got a phone call. He said, man, I was fishing this point, and the game wardens came over and got on my boat and basically were insinuating that I could have been snagging these fish. And he was like, no, you're welcome to. Yeah. You're welcome to watch what I'm doing. Yeah. And the game wardens, now this is hearsay from this guy. Yeah. Sure. And the game wardens said, uh, yeah, we're just having to check everyone because that Jones guy has been out here snagging. Dude. That's raw. It's this is crazy that a warden, because that's like a an officer. That's like a state employee. That's yeah. a little slanderous. It, it, it is. It's one thing if they a ticket had been written, and I assume there wasn't because you weren't. Not for snagging, no. Yeah. yeah. So there's no ticket. They have no evidence, and they're like, that's like a guilty. It, and, and this has happened numerous times. Yeah. So this is how it started. So... 
I was out here. This was the first week we murdered the fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two game wardens came up to me, extremely nice, polite, checked my stuff, went on about their way. They were great. 30 minutes later, two more wardens came up and basically like, we need to check you. And I was like, well, you're two other game wardens just checked. And they're like, well, we got to check you again. They got in the boat. They were looking through all my stuff, checking the expiration dates on my fire extinguisher mm -hmm. like stuff that normally yeah, they way too normally they look okay it's green you're green, green yeah but they're over here investigating wow. where wow so i'm like what the heck yeah and they, at the time they knew who i was i know they did so i had clients with me they <sighs> pushed awkward, off dude yeah they Ugh. pushed off and and the, the guy said hey after he pushed off he said you're that share lunker guy aren't you and i said yes sir and i was real try to be flightful he said you see all these boats thanks a lot Oh, wow. My client looked at me and said, what the hell yeah. just happened? So, wow. <laughs> well, he's right. I mean, he's right. All those boats were because of you. And, but, yeah, but. Like, why is then, he bitching? Um, it's, but, it's more work for him. And then. It's more money. I, I guess it was the same guy who tells people, all I see him over there is just jerking into these fish. Oh, gosh, dude. And then this was just back in the spring this So this year. warden doesn't fish. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if he was mad that this was his little honey hole or what. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. So there was a... Maybe. A, maybe he does fish hardcore and yeah. yeah. And you ruined it for him. <laughs> and this has been <laughs> going on since February 2021. Right. What are we? January of 2023? Right. right. So this was back in the spring. There was a banquet somewhere at some ranch around here. And the game wardens were invited. It was for like kids or something. And they were all sitting at a table, and uh, someone overheard them at the table saying, yeah, we're going to catch that that Josh guy out there snagging these bass. Gosh. And he confronted them at the table. Yeah, I was like, no, good. I've been with them. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is what he said. I'm pretty sure he said he's he's been with me, and I'm not snagging him. He stood up for me one way That's or another, cool. basically yeah. saying I'm not snagging him. So there's still a little beef, though? No, I got them? no beef. I just want these people I know, away. but the wardens still, though they haven't, you know, have zero proof uh, or three years in or two I, years I in. I got plenty of videos out there. Right. I mean, they can, but it's like we were talking about you mm -hmm. snagging them. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets so hyped up yeah. that it becomes, like, real. Yeah. Like you really did it, yeah. Because everyone believes it. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's I've that's the that. bad thing yeah. about being in my position, your position. People start talking, and then people start believing it. Right. It doesn't matter what people believe. Exactly. But when it's the game wardens, yeah, yeah. that's a and it that's stinks brutal. that you've got the biologists on your side and yeah. the wardens against you. I mean, this you, was a big so. deal. Yeah. This was a big deal. So, anyways, I long there's yeah. been some other stuff happened. Yeah. I got a ticket for fishing without a license. This is a story I want to tell publicly. Yeah. I bought a license in February. Oh, you got you got got by the the weird Texas thing. It's not an annual. It's like a what is it? Do you August know about top? that? Yeah. So no. Well, he's I lived barely here. know about yeah, it. So I fished here. without a license many times in the state because I thought it was January or January. So, anyways, February, me and my buddy Reynolds were down here. He bought a license and I bought a license at the same time. We come back in December. I knew that they expired September 31st. Uh -huh. I pull up here in this parking lot. I said, I got to go get my license. And he's like, no, they're good a year now. Oh, and I was yeah. like, no, they're not. They expire September 31st or 30th, whatever. And he's like, no, look, it goes a year to date. Yeah. I was like, well, cool. We bought ours at the same time. Right. We're good. So we went fishing for four hours. The next morning over at... The marina, not Elm Creek, the other one. I go to get my license printed off so I could have it. And she said, no, your license expired. And I was like, well, how is his good? And she's uh -huh. like, oh, that's an extra $7, and you can get it year to date. That's a new option. Uh, see, I didn't know that. I didn't either. I still don't even know yeah, that, but yeah. that's what she said. Yeah. It's a new option. So I said, oh, print me off a new license. Right. So I fished four hours that day. We hammered them, by the way. Caught a 10-pounder, yeah. like 45 pounds. So the next morning I get my license. We come fishing, no big deal. Yeah. Caught a fifteen pounder. Oof. Legal. With yeah. your license. Yeah. With your license. Had a license, yeah. suckers. <laughs> yeah. Went about my merry way. Uh -huh. It had to be a two months later. I was at Coleman Lake in a completely different county. Game Warren's up there waiting on me. And I got talked to him and he's like, We got a problem. 
I was like, yes, sir. Two months after. A month and a half, two months. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was over a month. <sighs> it was in a different county. Yeah. He said, we got a problem. I said, yeah. It's from back in December. And I said, <laughs> what about December? And he's like, you're fishing without a license. It's like, yeah, it was a huge misunderstanding. Uh, yeah, sure. My buddy had one that lasted till January somehow or February, whatever. The same time, yeah. And mine didn't, and it was just a big yeah. ordeal. And he's yeah. like, yeah, that's a new option or something you could have yeah. added. And I was like, yeah, man, it, I only fished half a day, you know. <laughs> Okay, I broke the law. It was not intentional, though, right? You got to be thinking, is this guy serious? Yeah, right like now? I could have lied. Yes, one hundred percent, I could have said that's an old pick. Yeah, sure. What are you gonna do? Sure. So, he's like, "Well, uh, I gotta write you a ticket." Oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> and I was like, "Man, can't we just let this one slide? Like, this wasn't freak accident." How know? old is this warden? Like thirty-five. Young guy, yeah. I still Young got dude. the ticket in my truck. The only Shh. ticket I ever got. You need to frame it. The only one I ever next got. Next to the 15 yeah, ne- pound share lunker. No, no frame sitting it. in the lunker no, bunker. No, you frame and... it next to your actual license. Yeah. You know. So I probably should. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he's like, "You you were fishing without a license?" Or no? He said, "He said I got to write you a ticket." I said, "Man, can we let this one slide, please?" Yeah. He's like, "You know, it just looks really bad when you're out here posting pictures of fish and you ain't even got a license." Wow. And I was like, dude, it like I bought one before the sun came up the next day. Like whatever. So my question is how because on the forums I pay attention to them even though the majority of you guys are idiots. The story's not done, it gets better. Oh God. (laughs) So he wrote me a ticket. I broke the law. I will one hundred percent admit I paid the ticket. I didn't I didn't call the court clerks and say, I want to go to court. I I paid the ticket because I was in the wrong. I was. It had to be five minutes later that game warden called someone and told him that he wrote me a ticket for fishing without a license. Five, ten minutes later, they're already on the forums. That's what, that's what I was going to... He's a poacher. He got busted, no license, no guide license, which I wasn't guiding. That's what I was going to ask. How, how did people even know? He told yeah. one of the guys who's literally trying to ruin my life. That's a, and, That to me is like uh, from an official government official standpoint do you know the like, game warden's name like don't say it, but I, I it's could on get the it. ticket yeah. i'd love to know because yeah. that's so very th- unprofessional this has all been taken care of i talked to one of the main good probably the main guy over yeah. texas parks and wildlife it's yeah. all been taken care of yeah um but how that guy went and told the guy who's literally trying to ruin my life yeah what happened was the other person at the other marina not elm creek told this guy yep that I was fishing with. I came in there because I didn't have a license. Right. That guy told the game warden. Yep. Wow. The game warden got me two months later. Yeah. Welcome to fishing in Texas. I was breaking the law. Yeah. I did not have a license. I will clarify. I deserved it. But he told the game warden. Wow. The game warden wrote me a ticket. And then after he wrote me the ticket, called that guy. And he's on Texas Fishing Forum, Bass Resource, Facebook, BBC Boards. He's People are he's all a about poacher. drama, dude. They need What's to, the deal? He needs to give up a share lunkers. Blah. It's They're right, all dude. about, dude, you bring all this all this money all to this the local good. economy, dude. All these fishing, out, out-of-state fishing licenses sold because of the big fish you catch. Look, people are here because of I'm that. I'm really good about calling people douchebags and saying, like, that person's not good. I, I haven't been around you a ton, but... Outside of you being confident in what you do, which I have no issue with because there's evidence to back it up. Mm -hmm. Like I have not seen um, like you're very humble about the processes. You you've been completely honest about situations where you maybe, you know, didn't do something right. Mm -hmm. Like you there's never been anything. Like I said, we just nothing to hide. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Uh, I and, and I'm pretty good at spotting yeah, he knows. Yeah. I'm really good oh, yeah. at being like that guy. I that guy's a joke. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know these guys. That yeah. guy, they're relentless. He's, though yeah. he's the same one that's uh, accused me of buying a hundred dollars in bluegill. <laughs> can he, you buy bluegill here in Texas? Yeah, you can buy, dude. Uh, okay, I saw legal. that. I uh. saw that when you caught the sixty-one pounds. Someone was like, my buddy saw him at Elm getting yep. blah blah blah, and I was dying. And apparently, the guy confronted me at the boat ramp and called me out on it. One hundred percent did not. Dude, 
You, do you think I use bluegill out there? This is Texas fishing forum, I assume. So, uh, hey, yeah. Unbelievable. It's also, the same douchebag so that went after you. Here's, oh, a, yeah. here's a story, though, I'll tell you. I had a, a film guy hired to come out here for a week with me back in the summer of 2021. And I rolled up on this huge school of fish, dude. 200 fish. You'd catch one immediately and then nothing. Yeah. So I was like, dude. I got to figure out how to catch how these. How to catch them, yeah. I got to figure out if they're bass. Yeah. I don't know what they are. Yeah. Right. So you did so a little litmus test. I went, I came in here. I wasn't trying to hide nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought five bluegill. Yeah. Five dollars worth. Yeah. I'm not trying to hide nothing. Sure. I'm just trying to figure out what those what, stupid what things they are. are out there. Yeah. I go out there. They're not bass. They're carp. Yeah. I caught none. None, yeah. Okay. Go about my merry way. Come back. Here we go in the forums. Oh, he, I figured out how dude, he's catching dude, take all it these. easy on the crappie dude. guy that used to fish with minnows. Dude, the, like, to take the it dude, easy, the guys. The dudes yeah. on the forum, yeah. it's, like, worse than it's junior so high with brutal. girls, like, God. going PMSing. It's like so brutal. Like, the stuff that... This is why I really... So, you did that for Chris, and then I, like, started paying attention and asking people questions who knew you and stuff. And I have an affinity for people who get a lot of hate, who handle it well in my eyes i know it's hard because i get it i the hardest part though is for me getting on that forum and seeing the blatant just made up i'm like mm -hmm. how did we even like someone keeps saying my dad owns keystone pipeline i'm like show me the money <laughs> yeah. like like i'm this trust fund kid and i'm like show me where the trust fund is yeah. i would like to take some, yeah. like the things that get made up i get it like and it gets to a point though where you have to laugh like yeah. oh and i feel like you're getting to that point or you're, you've been at that point where it's like now it's comical the things that they say yeah. like that some i do them, some of them are hilarious i'm gonna read one yeah right. heck yeah Is it's, it a, uh, it's recent yeah. it's crazy what they come up with i'm and i try and figure it out i'm like well, how did we get from wherever something happened social to this? media is a bad thing it's dude. funny though yeah but it's it's kind of sad that these people are are trying to hurt someone yeah make them look bad mm -hmm. yeah because they're lacking something yeah. for yes themselves. and that's what you have to tell yourself something's going on i like to tell myself mom plug your ears if you're listening i like to say man that man's not getting a lot of loving yeah. it's bad at home you know they're angry at a woman for some I reason i don't know i i'm it, trying here's so here's one this was i don't know when it was but i had a screenshot <laughs> yeah. these are funny i could read a thousand of these <laughs> yeah dude here's here's a guy brett says i don't ever say much or express my opinions on facebook at all but i keep seeing this dude showing off his fish and i gotta say something laugh out loud it's high fence fishing <laughs> it's like me taking a pick of a 15 pounder i caught out of the tank at bass pro shops oh my yes gosh. it's 15 yes i caught it does it make me a good angler no i've always known most of the Guggen YouTubers were. Yeah. Yeah. But so many people thinking he accomplished something great is crazy. Randy Blockett said it best. Fishing <laughs> is going to start having an asterisk beside it because of the weights. Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa hit a lot of home runs. Would they have hit that many without steroids? Hell no. Would this dude be able to catch two 15 pound bass in a year without live scope? Hell no. It's, come, a, come. it's a tool people use. Some of the skinny jean wearing entitled kids of this generation want to play video games and not put in the work that's cool but you're not the greatest angler catching those fish any more than you can be the greatest hunter hunting in a zoo this guy spent some time, time. Yeah. he did he's angry he, did. he hey, was angry did he spell any of those words wrong Wait, I bet he, like yeah, it was I bet hard he did. to read <laughs> <laughs> that was hard to read like the I grammar is always what special. i have to say to that guy is come try it because i've done it like i've done it the last five six days it is not easy dude do, it do, is not easy if we if um live sonar did not exist do you think that we would have even known all these teens were in ohiv to yeah. this extent i mean back in uh 2010 there was a lot caught yeah in. they yeah. were catching a ton single yeah. swimmers yeah, yeah big single swim baits mm -hmm. yeah yeah but um, do you think we're tapping fish that we would have never tapped or do you think like even without live sonar we well, still would be without live sonar we wouldn't catch probably six or seven of those 12 share lunkers last year mm -hmm. yeah. out of this lake mm -hmm. a lot of them are caught shallow not you know using any sonar um so yeah it definitely helped all my fish obviously would not have been caught I'll be the first to admit it. 
I would still be working at the cable company. If wow, it wasn't for dude. What a Sonic. story. So, hey, this changed my life for yeah. the better. Right. Right. You know? So, Ford Face and Sonar. And, okay, so uh, when I first heard about this, like, I and I saw a video, the guy with the orange beanie, the blonde dude or whatever with the long hair, and I just kind of brushed it off. I was on my way to a tournament. I had my mind on something else. And when I heard it was forward-facing sonar in an Alabama rig, I'm just complete like, in my mind, I'm completely turned off by it, not knowing how difficult it is to get those fish to bite, okay, for one, and I'm just learning this stuff too, uh, but two, you know, spending the time to come down here, uh, it, it's so not easy, dude. It is not easy. And what's really cool is, you know, learning that last year, the year before, whatever it was, learning all that stuff about you, coming down here and then just watching this video you posted was catching 61 pounds, you got away from the A-rig. Like, that's impressive. Like, talk about that. Yeah, I mean, people have been discrediting what I've done because it was live scope or yeah. active target in an sure. A-rig. Sure, Well, I did it last year with the 15-pounder without an A-rig, and then I did this without an A-rig. But still, they still, even after the video drop, say I'm using live bait, a lot of people, a lot of people. Uh, what are they like? Tip? Are you tipping your jig with a minnow or something? What are they? Uh, what are they saying? I don't know. I think because you could clearly see edited it for me. Yeah, it's, it's impossible. You could clearly see a trailerless jig. I don't know how many guys I, sent but, me like sent me screenshots of like, dude, this guy's not throwing a trailer on his swim jig. Like, how dumb is he? Oh, this guy's dumb. He just caught sixty one pounds, dude. I will say though, there's thousands and thousands and thousands more people that are happy and excited right exactly that's good. and that's yeah, what you have to awesome. always yeah. think about yeah and that's something that people would remind me like if i took anything personal they'd be like for one person you probably got ten thousand that are like yeah. cheering you yeah. on yeah. Yeah, no it's awesome. not personal it's good for the sport hey dude. but it's the good. swim jig yeah dude. you're on it uh, dude <laughs> yeah. i'm dialed did and you it, sell that company out of swim jigs? Did they sell I out? I don't know, man. Yeah. Are you, you, you need to ask those questions, bro. Ask those questions. You need a, there needs to be a Josh Jones swim jig. Absolutely. And you need a 12% you royalty know, on it. Or a, like a hair jig. I. Yeah. Do you swim, throw a hair jig much? No, because I, I don't get them much. Yeah. You got to get them tied somewhere. Yeah. So the swim jig is like the best option I had. And it worked out because it's such a good bait. And I'll explain. Yeah. I pulled up on a school of fish and there was like 200 of these things. And I went there to film for Six Cents, my, one of my sponsors. This is different lake, different time of year. This was Okima Lake, middle of summer, Oklahoma. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. yeah. I was crop fishing, fishing, and man. I rolled up on this huge school of fish. So all I had in the boat at the time, I think, was a spoon, five-inch flutter spoon. I caught two or three, four, ten. I don't even remember how I caught, Yeah. how many I caught. This was actually the day before I went to film. So I was just out there fun fishing, and I found these fish. I said, man, I need to come back tomorrow and film catch them with more baits mm -hmm. so i don't have to throw the spoon i came back the next day caught one or two no fit dude i was throwing drop shots carolina and they were still there you could see them yeah big swim baits crank baits i threw every single thing i had in that boat so i was like i don't think i gotta get them to bite they will bite because they were following they were following the bait like every time they're bass you know they're yeah. bass yeah so i had a crappie pole crappie jig Started catching them, <laughs> like 25, like every cast wow. on this little bitty, teeny, tiny crappie jig. So I'm like, man, this is like the best kept secret in the world. I can go win these tournaments. Middle you know? of summer, too. Middle That's of summer. Crazy. I'm like, yeah. dude, I can win a lot of money on this. I'm going to keep it a secret, but yeah. this isn't going to help six cents. So yeah. how, in the moment, how am I going to help six? Yeah. You know? So I found a swim jig. It had a trailer on it. Uh-huh. From fishing Lake Fork at night, fishing the green lights. That's yep. what we throw. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't get hung up a lot. So I threw it out there, nothing, nothing. I'm like, man, this is the smallest thing I got. Took the trailer off, cut the brush guard off. <laughs> Changed the profile. Trim the skirt. Did you cut the brush guard off to snag them? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> just, That's I'm what just some people say. With you. I know. So I made it as small as possible. Started catching them one after another. Um, I bet I only caught nine or ten. Man, you gotta get and you're on swimming a hair it. Like, jig program. Like you're swimming, just slowly swimming it. Pen yeah, and pendulum. Swimming, yeah, yeah, just kind of slowly bringing it over these because there's it was a hump and there's three brush piles nice. and these fish were on it. So. Gotcha. I took it to my other lake, Dripping Springs, that I got big yeah. bass, eight, yeah. nine, ten pounders, and yeah. they're impossible to catch. They just don't bite in the summer, and uh, 
actually, every single time I went, I would catch an eight or a nine pounder. Wow. Middle of summer. Every single time I went. I had the the numbers of how many days in a row I caught an eight pounder. I forgot now. Yeah. I'd be lying if I tried to tell you. Yeah. But it was impressive for Oklahoma. Yeah. Um couple days I caught three over eight. Wow. For Oklahoma, that's, that's huge, insane. Dude. Yeah. In the summertime, Are middle you kidding of summer. Me? Yeah. All on the swim jig. Wow. No trailer, no brush guard. Disgusting. So that was in the summer. I I was catching the heck out of them. I come out here when I got the ticket in December with mm-hmm. Reynolds. Mm-hmm. And uh, for some reason, I just wasn't throwing the hair jig. Yeah. Or, or the swim jig, sorry. And we're throwing everything, throwing it. I'm seeing them. I'm like, dude, these fish are huge. That evening when we fished four hours, I picked up that swim jig and we caught a 45-pound stringer on that Gosh. swim jig in like 30 minutes. Wow. It's it's basically just that crappie jig with a bigger hook, right? When yeah. So what it is, why it works, is when you're bringing it through, that skirt's just barely really pulsing. Moving. It's and not a swim bait tail. No. It's just bare, It's just like a marabou hair yeah. jig for the smallmouth. So when here's the bait. Uh-huh. When that fish is right here... Mm-hmm. And you see that. You see that. You see it on the screen. Yeah, yeah. And that bait's just barely moving. Yeah. They can't resist it. So it's never a thunk. A lot of times it is, but most of the time it's not. It's kind of like a spy bait bite. Yeah, similar. Yeah. So that afternoon, I told my my buddy Josh, I said, dude, we're going to murder him. Yeah. Once I figured out that they were hitting a swim jig. Yeah. And the next day, we caught a 15-pounder, a 10 Gosh, dude. I do. We wrecked him. Well, what, one of the things I'll say, too, um, speaking about like me trying to figure out, you know, if what people say about you are, is true or whatever. I know um, we hung out with a lot of the guides from around here, and one of them is one of my really good friends. I think the world of him, not one bad thing to say about you. They all know you're catching those fish. Mm-hmm. They all know how, how hard you guys it is. out here? Mm-hmm. Rick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, and I trust him. You know, if yeah. I had a kid, I'd trust him with my kid. And know? I like Rick a lot, and I yeah. I think I got him on the live sonar bandwagon. Last yeah. year, he wasn't using it. Yeah. Like, Dude. Yeah. yeah, he hates it. Yeah. You need to get it. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. It's but it's the future. It is. So he's yeah. out here, and he's doing well with it. Yeah. Yeah. So That's cool, dude. That's really freaking cool. Yeah. Yep. It uh, It's crazy how, how everything's escalated. Yeah. I, I I do um I'm not trying to like praise you or anything, but I commend you because I do understand that hey, it's one of the reasons why I I respect the Gookins, you mm-hmm. know. They get so much of it and keep ticking. And yeah, they don't they don't I mean I'm sure maybe not with you, with me. There are a few things that I take personal, you know. Um but just to keep going and not just going, but getting better and expanding at what you're doing and stuff like. And I'm understanding the hate from, yeah. from you know, I see yeah. it firsthand. Dude, no one knows any of the Googans. Yeah. yeah. They don't. And they're yeah. just talking crap about them. Yeah, yeah. it's you know? true. And the more I've gotten to really know them and I'll, you know, there's the ones that I, I know I, they're. They're good dudes. Yeah, the only one I know is John B. He's yeah, like, he's cool, dude. Freaking he, cool. Super he's cool. He's a good dude. Help, he's helped me out on the video editing when yeah, no one else would. That's you know? awesome. Yep. If I have a question, I can ask him. I can call him right now. He would say, they're, they're, I'll send you a screenshot of what you need. Yeah. They're so much more personable than elite anglers, yeah. I'd say. You know, yeah, I don't know many elite anglers. Yep. Uh, is it intimidating when you see like a guy either on, well, or in person, I don't know if you've seen very many, but like when he's all logoed up and jerseyed up and all this and hands on the hips, is that kind of intimidating? Like, oh, is that, yeah, because I've seen some of the rap boats, yeah, and I've seen how they fish. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, like, it doesn't mean anything. you know we we kind of got off topic, but you, yeah, you were like, does everyone have a shot? Out of five hundred people, I bet only twenty five guys or less or less can consistently come out here. Yep and do well yeah so that most of the time there's 50 people so out of the 50 there's two or three guys yeah that actually know what they're doing enough yeah to, i, to I do can some vouch for that i really love chris he's a great angler but man he's making me nervous we got to film and <laughs> every day he comes in like it's tough <laughs> well i mean going back on that like so like all like all the attentions here on this lake and there's people from all around town like you know like so you know, you fish in channel swings and point, underwater points. I, we, I fished clear like like this growing up, and but you know when a guy is live in his you know his hoodie his hoodie's on, he's looking down at his screen. 
but he he's not positioned upwind. I mean, he's not pointing his 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 trolling motor or sonar upwind. Like he's going with the wind, just like aimlessly look around. Like, dude, that ain't it. That ain't it. You got to have total control. Like, if their foot's off that troll motor, yes. I'm like, they don't know. What they're doing. <laughs> yeah, they. I'll just let's go, go ahead and pull right in behind here. them. Yep, let's just go ahead and pull in. That's, that's awesome. Funny. So that's another that's big, awesome important piece. Well, Boat control is very very important. Very important. Yeah, a lot that's of times, good. as in that video you guys saw, I yep. just threw out a name and reel. Yep. Yep. Just position the boat where it needs to be mm-hmm. and your bait and everything. It's and that I learned that so well, crappie fishing. Because you gotta get up close and personal with these things. But that's high fence fishing. That's so dumb. Yeah. Dude, all that takes skill. Everything you're talking about takes skill. And like that, like I applaud you. Like that's you don't see a lot of that on the elite tour. I'll tell you that right now. There's maybe two guys. I don't even think th- so. Uh, yeah. Do you think there's anyone on the elite series that actually has it figured out to to the level that that i don't think so yeah they're not I truly agree. capitalizing yeah. yet they get they do good here or there but they they don't you, really I mean, know what they got to think i've got seven years eight years of this mm-hmm. right the elite guys have what two at you, most. yeah what the first person that ever won with it patrick walters yeah. on four yes yeah, yeah. Three, was that three, 19, years ago? 19 19 yeah. i think that was it was after that no was it 20 it was like 21 it was fall 21 of, fall yeah of, it was a fall tournament too 20 maybe then yeah it was fall just, of 20 fall, fall of 20, 20. Fall of twenty. Yeah, it was after COVID. That's why it was in the fall. Yeah. Yep. That's insane, dude. I'd already had a lot of big fish caught by then. <laughs> That's and they so were cool. still calling it crappie scope in twenty twenty twenty. Yep. So yeah, it's it's gonna take a long time. Um you gotta be in shape, agile, as yep. you know. Yep. It's a lot more people. I mean, I used to be a bass guy too. Yeah. If I had a seat on the I thought seats looked goofy. Yeah. Dude, you have to have you gotta a seat. have it. You got to lean up against you it. You yeah. have to. Dude, total control. You need total control. That's, yeah, yeah that's that it. that's very 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 important. Yeah. That forget what it looks like. Yeah. Forget what it looks like on camera. You have to have a seat. Yeah. To lean that's, up against. That's awesome. That's, Speaking of seats, um, and as we're winding down here, Josh, I, I I know you've got guide trips and filming. Tomorrow you're filming with uh. One of your buddies? Yep, Jim Houston. That's awesome. He should be rolling in anytime. Did you bring a chair for him, a seat? Yeah, he's he he lets me run troll motor. Yeah, yeah. So he just stands and holds That's on. That's cool. I can't wait to watch that. That's awesome, man. We That's... filmed out here before. Yeah. I actually missed one 14, 15 pounds. Wow. Is Hopefully he, you guys get it tomorrow. Is he on that live game? Yeah. Yeah. I he mean, looked down. He went, yeah. You know, he... <laughs> yeah. He has For a, an old timer. Well, his you know, his wife had a stroke. He hasn't yeah. been fishing as much as yeah. you. Yeah. So yeah. he doesn't... And uh, to stay good with the live scope, you got to use a lot. Yeah. Right. Or the active target, whatever it is. Right. Sure. So the crappie game, I was out of it. I went fishing today. And it was a little rusty. <laughs> For the crappie. Dude, yeah. yeah. So uh, the biologist we had on said it, that's where his concern with um, live sonar was, was on the crappie side. He said because y'all have gotten, or the, you're, you don't do much crappie anymore, but the crappie guys have gotten so good at telling what a big one is versus a small one. And then he said... The way their spawn happens, sometimes there's good years and sometimes there's bad years. And so he was concerned only on really on the that crappie side. Do you I mean it's concerning bass and crappie. Mm-hmm. Um these small lakes. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about this lake, but a lake like what what I don't even know a small lake around here. Where I come from, all the small city lakes, mm-hmm. some of them, Colgate City Lake had giant three and four pound crappie. And most they're, people keep their crappie. They're, now, they're, they're easy to catch now. Yeah. So you have a 350-acre lake that has, I fished it for a year. I saw zero boats mm-hmm. until someone saw me there, had to take a picture of my truck at the ramp and post it online. The very next day, there was nine, nine boats after I didn't see one for months. Is it hard to catch a big one there now? I don't know. Are, are I mean, there I'm big ones? There. But yeah. that's the deal. That's, yeah. that's where it's going to hurt is the smaller lakes. Bass, bass are kind of finicky. Mm-hmm. You start holding them, they can get infection, fungus growing on them. If you bring them up deep, um, that that one I caught deep actually died. Oh wow! That's going to be part of it. Yeah, I don't want it to die. I'm going to try to let it go. Right, yeah. but things happen. It is a, a renewable resource. That's why they're here right. for our pleasure. Stuff like that's going to happen. It's going to happen in tournaments. But what's deep to you? Thirty five. Deeper than 35. Deeper 40, yeah, I yeah. did catch a 14, 13 that came probably 50 foot down. Yeah. Survived. 
when I donated it, Texas Parks and Wildlife, they did their thing. I, uh, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a live guy per se, but it's cool when you, when you watch them on live, when you release one and it swims away, you get to watch where it goes, that tree he goes to or whatever it is. Two weeks ago, I was out here and I caught a, a double digit, just smaller fish, you know, talking to you. But I watched that joker. I fizzed it, dude. I fizzed it, and and I was over fifty two feet of water, and I watched that joker swim straight to the bottom. A ten pounder, dude, just fizzed, just straight to the bottom, chilling. Hey, so I in Oklahoma, the biggest fish I've ever seen in Oklahoma had to be over thirteen pounds. It might have been a top twenty five fish of all time in Oklahoma. It was five feet under the surface. I got it to eat three times oh. after I missed it the third. I had it hooked. After I missed it the third time, I watched it go 55 foot down to the bottom. Just like that. That's amazing. That's cool. That is so hey, badass. What you just said brought up a cool, funny, yeah. kind of a funny story about not like you, Yeah, you know, catching big yeah, yeah, yeah. I met a guy. I don't even remember what state it was in. I was going somewhere, and uh, I met him at a gas station. And I had my stuff wrapped and stuff. He's like, you a pro? I was like, no, you know, I fish for fun. He's like, man, I just caught my PB, you know? <clears throat> and he's showing me, you know how people show you pictures. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I was like, dude, that's a good one. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. nine pounds. <laughs> he's friends with uh, Tommy Biffle. And <clears throat> he went back to Oklahoma and told Tommy, he's like, hey, I met this guy at a gas station and I showed him my PB. And well, at the gas station, the guy's like, what's your PB? And he, I was like, <laughs> Caught a couple 15s. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, he, he went back to Oklahoma and told Tommy, he's like, yeah, I met Josh Jones and I. I showed him my personal best pictures, and Tommy said, yeah, he's probably the wrong guy to be playing show and tell with. <laughs> so I, I, I just thought that was hilarious. So Tommy, Tommy Biffle, Biffle's awesome, dude. Tommy's like uh, my uh, like old man crush. It's true. I, when, when her and I first started dating, Tommy was on the tour, Elite Tour, like tw- 2012 or whatever it is, and, uh, and Trey would always come around. And I, I think when we all first met, you know, when Tommy was right there, and I'm like, oh, you know, it's Trey, my, my new girlfriend, and she's from Texas, and I was like, Tommy, she kind of has a crush on you, like, he, like, perked up, you know, <laughs> and uh, and then, like, ever since then, in 2012, like, 2013 on, like, he'd, he'd always come up to me at weigh-ins or the bump tank, whatever, and be like, where's your girlfriend? <laughs> That's all he would say every single time. I love Tommy. Yeah. I've never met him. Yeah, he's oh, cool, He's dude. awesome. He's, cool. he's that guy who tells you how, how he feels. And yeah. I, know, I like those guys, yeah. you know? No, that, that I don't know why that That's story awesome. reminded yeah. me. But that, that was funny. But that guy I met at the gas station is like a world champion archery shooter. Oh, oh wow. wow. Like, that's where he was going. That's cool. Like, he's a national world champion person. Wow. That's cool. For shooting bow and arrows. Right on, man. So yeah, it's this is all kind of escalated. It's pretty quick. You're for, killing it for dude. good. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, pretty. Uh, it is, but ride it while you can. Sometimes I think, and I'm sure you feel the same way. It's like, what am I going to be doing in ten years? Mm-hmm. Is this realistic? Mm-hmm. Am I right. still going to be able to do this? I know I'm going to be able to catch the same fish, do, do you, the same do thing. Do you think? Like, where do you sit right now? Like, if I asked you that question, do you think? Where do you think this is going? Like right now, where do you think? It's I don't going? know. Obviously, the lake's not going to be good forever. I'm going to have to go somewhere else, yeah. which is fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's plenty of places. I, Ever since I left Idaho, that's all I think about. Nice, Idaho, dude. Yeah. I just want to be You look there. like you're like from, like from you dude. belong in yeah, Idaho. You do. Yeah, it's yeah. like man, that. that's Northwestern. N- nothing yeah. wrong with that town I was in. I know it's kind of strange people up there. I believe that, too. <laughs> Were you, you weren't born in Oklahoma. You don't uh, talk like Arkansas. an Oklahoma, Arkansas. You don't even talk like you're from Arkansas, either. Man, I lived in Phoenix and Chicago. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Been all over. But wow. Yeah. That. I would live in Idaho. Nice. It's pretty out there. Yeah. And those smallmouth, man. Yeah. Dude, my buddy just caught a seven ninety eight today. Let's hook up in the fall. We should do that. Are you yeah. gonna go back in this? We're fall? gonna hang out. No, for real. Yeah. We're Let's gonna hang it. out in the west for yeah. a little bit and film as much as we can around uh, California. So Rick was like, that. "Dude, you should enter the U.S. Open." I was like, "Yes, I might, bro. You, you could got a place win to it. Stay. We got, I never we got, fished. We got a house five if, five miles away. If you ain't uh, scoping, you hoping on Mojave." <laughs> and I did see the last one. He had like some giant smallmouth. Dude, he? you would love it. Yeah, all you would love it. All watching them. We got a house right there, dude. Five minutes. Yeah, you could stay with. You rented it? No, no. Mom, my family owns it. Are you We're good. Yeah, yeah, you're you're golden, dude. Mm-hmm. Just get out there. 
Real I'd tips. even pay your entry fee for the Juan Bass U.S. Open because I know you've finished in the top five. Just looking. But do up. we get? But we get a percentage because we're we're in casino country. <laughs> so. When is it? Uh, it's in October. October like it's usually like the tenth through the fifteenth something like it's that. It's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's the tournament deer is. season though. Yeah. You're going to Idaho, right? Yeah. I well the first week of October. Probably. And then you fish the U.S. Open. Hey, I seriously I'm, might. I. It, with what you do, that's a tournament you should. And, and for me, that's as the U.S. Open. It, you got the classic, and you have the U.S. Open. You know, Josh, we're uh, we're running low on runtime here. We got some footage from a previous interview. I, th- I think it's still on this hard drive here. It's a three-hour interview. It yeah, it was awesome. It was it was intense. But um, as we're winding down, and I know you got to get up early. Um, wrapping things up here. Uh, do you have any uh, life advice or any just advice, you know, living or front forward facing sonar? Any advice to uh, give to the viewers? Something, something gold. Life give advice. Us go- life yeah. advice. Life advice. Yeah. Man, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I have plenty of advice, but I haven't like lived it. Yeah. My advice: anyone fishing going forward, keep those GoPros rolling. Yeah. Because you might miss something that could change your life. Right. You know, eight days out here yeah. changed my life. Yeah. It's true. Eight days. 22 double digits. <sighs> eight days. That's all it took to and, change the trajectory. Yep. And, and if in you this didn't day and have age, GoPro, exactly. no one would have believed you. In this day, 2023 now, it's like if 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 it's not on video, it didn't happen. Wait, wait. Yeah. Like, I, I do have a question. It's kind of, I don't have to go into the negative, Phil. But one of the things people say is that you are weighing fish and the scale isn't on. Was your scale on? Oh, oh, this last one? Yeah. Yeah, so I got a new GoPro. It didn't have the wide angle like my previous chest camera. Right. So when I was weighing it, it cut it off. Right. At the time, I didn't know. How are you supposed to know? I'm not and like... And those are yeah. like... Di- those The dimming on those, like, I know which one you have. It's hard to see. Well, so you can see... I, I weighed the last one. It's like an eight-pounder. In the sunlight, you can see it was on, but I move it one inch and it's black. Right, yeah. It was just the angle. Right, yeah, that's what I I knew, but I saw the comments and I was just like, oh my God. Yeah, shut, go. scales shut off. those haters up. Yeah. So hey. my piece of advice is don't read the comments. <laughs> the comments actually, it makes you kind of feel Motivate sad. You? Oh, no, sad. It's sad, yeah. but Pity. again, they're kind of like funny. Yeah, they are. Like what? They are. This grown man, yep. most of the time man. Yeah. Thought it would be a good idea to actually type that. If he had an out of body experience in that moment, look right. down and he would have been like, "That guy's ridiculous." Yep, yep. Every but one the of fact them. that he actually typed it got and, so angry in that moment and yep. pressed send. Yeah, for everyone to see mm-hmm. how ridiculous that it's they are. It's crazy. It is mind blowing. Everyone's got an opinion nowadays, man. It's 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 terrible. And what really sucks is when that old man or whatever that that miserable person posts that and actually writes that out and then the next kid or whatever right a fan of yours reads this and then it influences that kid to think another way about josh jones yeah, that's, that's what that's, i've it's terrible that's dude. what i've ran into you know and that 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 does suck. so don't read the comments uh yeah the, so, don't read yeah hey so, but i will say the screenshots the hater comments on yeah. instagram huge hit nice. i post a screenshot i get like messages yeah i do them in my stories do, will you post I, them on facebook and instagram i don't do so much facebook yeah because it's kind of older generation yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i don't want to annoy them you know yeah because they're the ones right instagram's fun they're yeah, the ones like right instagram. they're the ones yeah. right <laughs> negative comments i did post the last one on instagram i got like a thousand comments nice or more i believe that so people man that and they know there's way more happy people than not happy people dude josh i am now a fan of yours i really am man you're you seem Thanks. like one of the dudes like i grew up fishing with you you're you're a hammer you know where to to shine your forward facing sonar obviously you know how to catch them you're very innovative dude that whole jig no trailer thing like that is ridiculous to that me. was an accident though <laughs> whatever you caught 60 plus pounds doing it dude that's amazing so as we're wrapping up here you gave some life advice give the viewers as we close out your best forward-facing sonar advice, and we'll cut it there. Uh, keep your foot on the trolling motor pedal. Left, Don't ever take it off. Left, right, and center. Keep, keep that foot on there. Yeah, You'll get good left foot, right foot. Don't matter. Just keep it on there. Keep following that fish. 
That's, that's good stuff. I think that was a good pod, boys. I appreciate yeah. it. That's, was it good? That's it. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate it, man. Good. You killed it, dude. Thanks, Thank you. Yep.